What's going on guys, I'm bringing a trade sim video looking at the random sort of blockbuster trade that went down today. You don't usually see trades going on when like the Stanley Cup playoffs are still happening. As you can see here, Ivan Provera being traded to the Blue Jackets with $2 million retained or 30% of his contract by the LA Kings. LA Kings there actually get Kevin Connaughton and Hayden Hodgson's from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for taking on Cal Peterson's contract, $5 million for the next two years. Sean Walker, who's actually like a pretty decent top six defenseman. Uh, Helge Granz there is a decent defensive prospect and a second round pick. Philadelphia also got a first and second round pick from Columbus for Ivan Provorov. So uh, Danny Breer over there making some moves. I think this is a clear indication the Flyers are entering a rebuild. Also, there's some rumors that Carter Hart might be traded, at which point I think, you know, the rebuild is 100% confirmed because you're not trading a 24-year-old elite goaltender unless you are like completely tying down the team and starting over, which it appears the Philadelphia Flyers are. So literally all the Flyers give up in this trade is Ivan Provorov and they get back like that huge haul you guys saw on screen, three players, three picks. So um, for this trade, I'm actually using my custom rosters. A lot of you said you want me to do that from now on for the trade sim. As you can see here, I've got Provorov as an 85 overall defenseman, high top four potential. Uh, he's 25 years old. He's at 4.7 million after the retention by LA Kings. Uh, just easier to put through the trade this way. Uh, I'll have two years left in real life. And you can see that he's got the ice pack and stick him up X factors. He actually had one of the highest, you know, shot blocks in the league. So 92 shot block in there. Also fairly disciplined, 90 discipline. So um, stick him up helps with stick checking and avoid penalties. Overall, you know, Provorov for sure is like a top four defenseman. I think early on in his career, people thought he might be a top pairing guy. And I think he's like a low end top pair or a good, you know, second pair defenseman. So uh, Columbus does give up, you know, a good amount here in a first and second round pick. And now it's actually the LA Kings first round pick they're giving up, which is currently 22nd overall. So, you know, a later first round pick along with a second round pick in 2024, which I think they have the option to make a second round pick in 2025 if they so choose, I think after like the first round of the 2024 draft. Kind of a weird condition on that trade, but right there guys can see what Columbus gave up. LA's first round pick with a second. And of course they got this first round pick back for Gavrikov and Corby Salo, who were both on expiring deals. So essentially traded, you know, two expiring guys who might not resign with you for Provorov, who's, you know, not old at all. Again, 25 years old. Uh, Columbus definitely needs some help on the defense. Even though they had a ton of injuries this year, when healthy, um, after Rensky and Gavrikov, you got Boquist, Bean, Peak, like, um, definitely need some help. I know too, obviously, a lot of people aren't happy with Provorov right now due to the Pride Night stuff. But I feel like Kekalainen doesn't care about that at all as he's just trying to save his job right now. Especially too with the rumors of him potentially hiring Mike Babcock as the new head coach. I feel like he's just trying anything to make this team better and of course, you know, keep his job. It will be interesting too to see who they pick at number three. I feel like if they are trying to compete now, no way they go Michkov. It's got to be Carlson. But in regards to the trade here, guys, you can see the picks have a lot more value than Provorov. So I don't see Columbus saying yes. And yeah, trades are rejected. Um, in this game, first round picks have a lot of value. Um, if this pick was, you know, guaranteed 22, we'd have a bit less. Um, so we could try something like, um, to give it like accurate value, it'd probably be more like the equivalent to like the second and third there. Still though, yeah, Columbus says no. And on the next trade, Flyers made you guys with the LA Kings getting back Cal Pearson's contract. Again, in game, they're only overall making 5 million for two more years. Like that is a ton of money for a guy who's probably a backup. Maybe you're starter if you're not going to be a great team. Which obviously is going to be the case for the Flyers. I think if they do trade Carter Hart, they'll make Pearson the starter. And hopefully he'll play better. And if he does, maybe they can like retain half his contract and actually, you know, get some assets back for him. And with him too, they get back Sean Walker, who like I said, is a top six defenseman, but definitely low end um, in game here. 78 overall, making 2.6. Like, it's quite a bit of money for a guy, you know, playing on your bottom pair. Maybe even like your seventh defenseman if they do keep Gabrikov. So um, LA there gets a couple of cap dumps. And in order to make that happen, have to give up Grant here, who again... A solid uh, offensive prospect, 20 years old there, 76, medium top four potential, with a second round pick back in 2020, as well as a 2024 second round pick, and of course retaining 30% of Provorov's contract. So I think the retention for Provorov was two million bucks, so they essentially save five and a half million dollars here in exchange for grands and a second round pick, which isn't too bad. I think the Leafs paid like a first round pick to get rid of Marlowe's contract, which had the same cap hit, and then again the Flyers here literally give up nothing. So uh, we'll just do like a seventh round pick there, 2028. I don't think the LA Kings are going to go for this ever, but we'll try it. And yeah, trades rejected. And after those two trades, guys, just an update look at the Flyers' lines when they're healthy. So you got Faraby, Kachuria, Konecki on the first line. Big thing for them, too, is the fact that like Kachuria still might not even be healthy for next year, and he's their best player. So that's a huge loss if he's not back. Um, second line, you got Tippett, Hayes, Atkinson. Atkinson, as well, has some injury problems. Um, Allison, Lawton, DeLaurier, Bellows, Cates, Lazinski. Uh, defensively here, Sanhan, D'Angelo, Wristline, and York, Sealer, Walker. Like that defense, definitely not the greatest. Goaltending wise, you got Hart starting, but again, he could be on his way out, at which point, you know, Cal Peterson there is your starter. Like I said, this team clearly rebuilding um, to any like pending UFAs I didn't include. So like JVR is not here, guys like that. Um, yeah, looking at this team, 
I think Danny Briere is really trying to like tear it down to its core and restart. And now next year, you guys are trying the Provorov trade from Columbus perspective. Again, it's the LA first round pick along with a second 2024 for Provorov at 4.7 million. I can see in came here, the picks have a lot more value. So I feel like Philadelphia is definitely gonna accept. Should mention too guys, for all these trades and videos, I have the difficulty set to medium. Um, we'll see what the Flyers say here. And yeah, trades accepted, even though Provorov was on the block, they really want those picks. So um, in game, EA feels like Philly won this trade. Honestly, though, I think in real life, like, it was pretty fair. Uh, when you look at kind of, like, the going rate for top four defensemen, a first and second round pick is a bet what you're expected to pay. Especially, too, for a guy like Provorov, who's still in his prime, 25 years old, decent contract there. And like I mentioned, too, Kekalainen clearly trying to save his job. I feel like this is a decent trade for both sides. And after that trade, guys, I'm doing my best guess what the Blue Jackets lineup might look like when healthy. So I got Goudreau, Johnson, Lani as that first line. I really think they need Johnson to become that first line center. If they do draft Leo Carlson, he'll definitely be in this lineup somewhere as well. Uh, second line, you got Roslovich, Jenner, Chinikov, uh, Robinson, Sillinger, Marchenko on the third. Bemstrom, Crowley, Taxi on the fourth. So, like, clearly his team has some depth. I've also got a couple extra scratch forwards here. Liam Foody, Dan Forth, both of those guys could potentially, you know, ha earn a spot in this lineup. So, a lot of depth options. It's just I think they really need some star power. So, again, that's why I think Carlson probably makes his team. Maybe they even trade away one of these extra guys. And I feel like they have a lot of players to fill those bomb six roles. Defensively here, I've got Rensky Peak on the top pair. Boquist, Provorov on the second, Bean and Blankenberg on the bottom. I don't think Provorov and Renskill play together, both left-handed. Especially if Mike Babcock's the coach, there's no way these guys play together. I remember from the Team Canada teams, he like has to have left-handed guys on the left side, right-handed guys on the right side. As that actually played into like which defense made the Team Canada roster. Uh, goaltending there, Merzlinkin starting, Tarasov backing him up. Uh, Merzlinkin definitely has to be better next year uh, for Columbus to have any chance at the playoffs. And then next year, guys, I'll give you your first look at Provorov as a member of the Blue Jackets. So... I really think you guys can see him in game. Game face is definitely not good at all. It doesn't look anything like him. Uh, number nine pro Rob on the Blue Jackets. And next year, guys, we're trying the second part of this trade from LA's perspective. I actually totally forgot they got back Hodgson and Connaughton here. Not future considerations. Thing is, honestly, in game, um, that seventh round pick in 2028 might have had more value. As you can see, Hayden Hodgson there actually has the least amount of value on the Flyers. And then Kevin Connaughton, I don't think, is far behind. Uh, pretty much equal there to having, like, the bare minimum value. So, I uh, don't think it'll affect the trade at all. As you can see, we're saying over Cal Peterson. They actually want, even though, again, $5 million, 80 overall players quite a bit. Grand's there, solid defensive prospect. Sean Walker, a bit overpaid, bomb pair defenseman. And then a second round pick. I think the Flyers might go for this. The value's on our side. There's a chance that they do say no. And no, trade's accepted. Okay, so... Um, again, in-game, EA feels like, you know, Philly won both these trades. And in real life, I feel like they definitely won the LA Kings trade. Like, if they're trying to rebuild, the Kyle Pearson contract doesn't bother them at all. Same with, Shaw, same with Sean Walkers. And they get back a solid defensive prospect, a second-round pick. And then again, the pro Rob deal, I feel like, at worst, was a fair trade. If not, Philly won it. So, uh, some really good work there by Danny Briere. And after that trade, guys, assuming the LA Kings can keep their free agents, here's what their team might look like heading into next year. Obviously, they essentially just trade away extra players they didn't need to shed cap space. Again, Kyle Pearson was like their third goal in the depth chart. Sean Walker was their seventh defenseman. So, uh, forward group there, there's no change. It looks pretty good, especially too, if Byfield and Velarde can kind of take that next step. They become the players we think they can. Uh, defensively, like I mentioned, uh, they're not really missing Sean Walker at all. They still have a very solid top six. Now, they do need to re-sign Gavrikov and Edler, and I think, you know, with the cap space saved, they probably can do that. Gold tiny, they got Corby Salo who they need to resign. Maybe Corby Salo is a guy they'll lose. But Copley actually played pretty well for them last year anyways, so uh, they'd probably be okay in terms of goal, even if they lose Corby Salo. But that's gonna do it, guys, for this video. Again, if I had to choose a winner from the three teams, it's gotta be the Philadelphia Flyer. Below to your guys' thoughts on this trade in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this one, leave that thumbs up. Haven't subscribed yet, hit the sun button as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.